G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Off-Road Crusader. This one here we're talking about rims and tyres. The standard 2016 VX 200 series comes with these. Um, nice looking, chromey looking rims. Some small tyres on them, either on highway terrain or on all terrain. They work alright, but if you're looking to do any serious off-road work like I'm looking to do with this rig, then they are going to be retired fairly quickly. That's going to make a big bang, I'm sure. Let's wait for it. Wait for it. So replacing them, I've chosen to go with this setup here. So we have some ROH Trophy rims, 17 by 9 um, size, and with a plus 32 offset, I believe it is. Um, these ones here finished in black with a gunmetal grey in the centre. ROH told me these would fit on the 200 series VX because we have the larger brake calipers on the front. That's why they come standard with the 18s versus the GXL has the 17s. But the 17s offer a thicker sidewall, give you more bagging out when you want to let your tyres down and just makes for a bit more of a comfier ride off-road. So I've decided to go with the 17s. Wrapping them, I've got the Maxxis Razor MTs. Uh, these ones here are 2957017. So it puts them around that sort of 30 three to 34 inch mark, more towards 34 I think, um, and I just think they look pretty wicked. I do enjoy the look of these, I mean the tyres themselves are awesome, um, heard great reviews on them, um, my mate Harry tends to run them and he says they're a pretty good thing so I'm going to try these out, as opposed to the Nittos, I really wanted to get the Nitto um, trail grapplers, but unfortunately the stock of them is very very limited at the moment and their such prices reflect that. So I've decided to go for these. The rims themselves I like, but I just wanted a bit of a different look. Everyone seems to run either these in the trophies or the vapors. And um, if you know me, then you know I like to be a little bit unique. So rather than following the trend, I've decided to customize my rims and tires. So stick along for this episode. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So you can turn your rims and tires looking a bit like this to something like that. videos um, so here we are in the shed ready to go got the, the tire rim on the table ready to be worked on so it's had a good height here um, previous ones I've done you do them on milk crates on the ground but this just saves you back because I'm a dad now so I can complain about things like back pain and not get <laughs> told off about it for being oh you're too young anyway uh, what you're going to need to do this job is you are going to need a tire deflator is the first thing here whether or not you're going to be using a stick or a twig or something like an actual tire deflator like this one here this is an ARB digital deflator I'm just using this one here because I've had it laying around in the shed so we're going to be letting pretty much all the air out of the tire what that basically means is it's going to be easy enough to use our next item which is playing cards so we're going to be using these to push in between the rim and the tire basically creating that bit of a wall around there if you skip this step if you want to just paint the rim as it is and mask up, you may find that you're going to get a big gap or a big line basically where the tire meets the rim. And it can show and look pretty obvious if you're going from say a black rim like this to a gold or maybe from a lighter coloured rim to a dark one you may notice there's that big edge there. So this way allows you to get that paint all the way to the edges. The next thing you're going to be using and you're going to be using a lot of it is masking tape. Depending on the style and the sort of painting you're going to be doing, you will either need a lot of this or you will need a lot, a lot of this. Um, I would recommend getting the thicker stuff, the, the actual width of it. So this one is about 50 mil thick because it allows you to obviously cover up things like your tires or if you're going to be doing a different design on your, your rims, you can obviously mask up appropriately. If you've got old tires on your rims and you're going to be painting your rims, you may just choose to just paint and just leave the overspray on the tire. These are fairly new, so I want to keep them looking fairly really new. So I'm going to be masking up most of this tire here. Who mows their lawn on a Wednesday morning? How dare they? Anyway, hopefully that's not too obvious for you. The next thing you're going to need is sandpaper. Now, depending on what sort of job you're going to be doing and what your rims are like, you're going to be needing different grades. You're probably going to be needing a lot of it. I've got here some 120 grit. I find that works best uh, so you haven't got anything too fine, um, that it's not taking any material off or anything too coarse where it's causing a lot of scratches and damage. So 
trying to time these takes between when it gets all further over the lawnmower. Um, so we're going to be using that to basically take the sheen off the top, help the paint to stick to the rim much easier. Also because this rim here has got a little bit of damage to it, uh, we're going to be using a little bit of filler and some sandpaper to, to cover over those bits there and make it look factory again. Unfortunately, when I've got these rims and tyres, they went on on a Friday afternoon and then on a Saturday morning, um, I went out for driving out to Brunswick and damaged these rocks and mud and sticks and the rest of it. I was very annoyed about it. But anyway, it gives me a good chance to do this video. So anyway, sandpaper, you're going to need a lot of that. Next thing you're going to need is spray putty. Spray putty here is really good for filling in um, where you've obviously taken gouges out, whether you've got any rim rash or anything like that from rubbing against curbs, or if you've done what I've done and pushed it against, rock, against rocks and things like that. So this will help to fill it up, and then we use our sandpaper to sand it nice and smooth, and it basically leaves that sort of factory looking finish. Then you're gonna be using some of this. This is just some metal um, primer. This is a Dulux one. I've chosen to go with a lighter color primer, simply because I'm gonna be painting my rooms in a lighter color. And if my sort of primer coat is light, then it makes it a lot easier to bring out the lighter color of your base coat too. So arguably the most important thing you're actually gonna need for painting your rims is the paint to paint your rims. Um, depending on what color you're gonna be going, you'll obviously get whatever paint suits you. I wanted to go for that goldy sort of color and I've managed to find this, which is Dupli color. It's like a color match um, spray paint that they do for different paint codes. This one here is a DSH44 sandalwood. Not sure exactly what car that's from, but it's a really nice gold color, so I'm gonna use it. Only downside to these particular cans is that stores tend to only stock one or two of them because they're a touch-up item. So if you're looking to buy them in bulk, you may have to go to different shops in order to get them all. And I picked my day as well. One guy over there is doing his lawn, the other one's using a bloody grinder. Pretty sure the guy behind is gonna be using the drop saw fair enough and make a lot of noise, but you just can't pick it. <laughs> Yesterday was nice and quiet, now look at it, everyone's doing their noisy stuff. Six and a half hours later. So you'll also need a little bit of black spray paint. Uh, this particular design I'm going to be doing means the inside's going to remain black. And I'm basically going to use that to dress up the centre. Finally, I'm talk over all this noise. Uh, I've got some semi-gloss clear coat as well. Again, I'm using the Dulux brand because I like it and it tends to have to quit dry pretty quickly. So that's what I've got here. Clear coat, you're going to need at least probably one can per rim because you want to get a nice thick coat of clear coat on top there because it helps to protect it. And being rims, they're going to get blasted from sand and mud and water and all the rest of it. You want to protect them as best you can, get a good quality clear coat and go nuts, give lots of coats. <laughs> now the last little thing I have here, which I'm going to be using, which you don't have to, but I'm choosing to do because I think it looks mad, is get yourself one of these, which is a paint marker. So these ones here are designed to mark onto rubber. So what I'm going to be doing here is basically filling in the Maxxis Razor MT words on the tire uh, to give that sort of white wall look. Because <laughs> uh, look, personally I like it, a lot of people don't. Some people love it like I do. Personal preference, uh, it's not going to last forever because it is paint on rubber so it's not really going to etch completely in. But it's going to look pretty cool once it's done. So if you want to do that then grab yourself a little paint pen like this and you can go nuts. Good fun. So there we go, all masked up and ready for paint, aren't we? No, we are going to get into the prep work. Now, the quality of your paint job is gonna be directly proportional to how much prep work you put in. Um, I'm gonna be trying to sort of scuff up all of the rim. I'm not too fussed about the insides here and insides there, like I, I want it to be sort of scuffed, but I don't wanna really scratch it up. They're not gonna to matter too much in those real corner bits. So um, mainly on the outside surfaces, on these scuff marks here, we're going to be basically sanding to get that to look all nice, so we're going to start on that now. So I find it easiest just to get a small piece of sandpaper, sort of that size. At least that way I can sort of fold it over and then your fingers have better grip because you're gripping on the sandpaper itself and it allows you to sort of get into those spots. If you need to get into any sort of corners or anything like that, you can fold it again to get into little creases, but I find that's a good place to start. So it's never like the nicest thing, <laughs> um, purposefully scuffing the rims, but once you get the first little bit out of the way, that's much, much easier. So I'll start with the damage bit and work my way around. So I'm just 
gonna do a light coat of the uh, spray putty over the whole thing. I sometimes find that with this sandpaper you do sometimes get fine lines that don't that uh, sort of show up in the paint. So a little bit over the top does help with that. Once we've done that full coat, we're then gonna sort of focus on the areas where there's a bit of damage. Um, they're fairly highlighted, they're nice and shiny because I've actually spent a bit of time buffing them up or scratching them up with the sandpaper. And then, um, yeah, we'll just keep sort of layer of sandpaper, layer of sandpaper until we get a nice smooth finish. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of exactly what this uh, spray putty is doing. So you can see pretty much the whole rim's had a light coat. You can see there's quite a damaged area. Where else was there? Over here there's a little nick. Over here as well. So the filler just helps to kind of slowly kind of build up material onto there. Obviously it's not metal. <laughs> But uh, it'll help to sort of fill in the gaps so when the paint goes on you won't even notice those scratches were there. So all I'm going to do now is just do a light sand over the whole thing. And what you should notice is that should be less defined. And then we'll put a few more layers of spray putty over the top. I'm going to go ahead and just do those now and then I'll come back to you once it's all done. Eternity later. Um, this was meant to be a nice quick episode uh, that was just going to take me a few hours but unfortunately uh, having a baby tends to throw a lot of spanners in the works so it's now night time <laughs> and I haven't even put the primer down yet but we're ready, all ready to which is good um, so I've basically been around I've done um, a lot of filling and sanding so here is pretty much back to normal here you pretty much can't tell it's there the big gouge I've reduced it a lot um, but I think it's taken out so much material that it's going to be difficult to fill that in and it's still not just fall off as soon as you hit a little rock or something like that. So I'm, <laughs> I think that's as good as I'm going to get it, to be honest. And it's much less noticeable now, which is really the, uh, the aim of the game. So we're ready to put some primer down now. And again, we're not too worried about overspray because we've taped and masked up a lot of things. guys to see it so I'm just going to start because it this spray paint for whatever reason it runs fairly thick um, and sometimes when you spray it you get like kind of bits out of it so um, yeah essentially I know that I need to be quite light with the coats on this I don't want to go too overboard with it so we're just going to take it nice and slow just difficult thing about making YouTube videos is when you do an absolute cracker of a segment of filming and you're making all the best jokes and all the pop culture references and you're like wow this is awesome having a great chat to the old uh, YouTube viewer and then realize that you weren't even recording <laughs> um, so ta-da <laughs> here it is in gold um, I've done now a number of coats to cover up where all that primer has been why buy your $600 method rims when you could buy these and, you know, the old lipstick on a pig? <laughs> I think tomorrow's job is going to be the clear coat because um, I really want this to sort of dry as much as possible before I put the clear coat on. I will catch you guys tomorrow because it's getting quite late. Um, I was really hoping this would all be done in one day, but babies have a way of uh, throwing many spanners in the works <laughs> and making the days seem longer than they need to be. So um, anyway, I'll, um, well, you guys will see me in about five seconds, but I'll catch you in the morning. Cheers. Three weeks later. And just like that, an unknown amount of time has passed <laughs> in your eyes, um, and the base coat is all done. I've put on probably around five to six layers of base coat on this. There's no sort of uh, rough edges anymore. There's a few, like even the, there was some spots sort of here and here where there were some chips and you can't see them at all, which is awesome. The big gouge up the top here is like 
not even really noticeable. Um, it's still there, and if you're really looking for it, you'll find it, but um, I'm happy that it's pretty much covered up. <laughs> so, uh, next step is to use the clear coat on this one here. Um, I'll probably end up doing around sort of five or six coats of that as well, because I really want the clear coat to be nice and thick to give as much protection for this lovely gold paint um, as possible because I do a fair bit of beach driving. Um, there'll be mud, there'll be water, all the rest of it, all those sorts of things. And especially like having an abrasive like sand constantly rubbing against this surface, eventually it's gonna wear through. So um, it's not gonna be as durable as something like a powder coat, but then again, you gotta pay someone else to powder coat it and you gotta take the tire off the rim. And this is much cheaper and I like doing it because it's me. So um, also it costs me next to nothing. I mean, it costs you paint and materials and that sort of stuff, but <laughs> that's negligible compared to what you pay for powder coating. So we're going to get on to putting some of the clear coat on. So again, I'm using the Dur uh, Duralux um, Duramax semi-gloss clear coat. Good shake. You can do lots of nice small coats, starting up nice and high. Doesn't really matter if you overspray with the clear coat because it's not going to be too obvious on the rubber. And essentially, you don't want any runs in the clear coat. And there you have it. Um, that's pretty much oh, what was that? Five coats of clear, um, and that is looking really, really nice. It's got this awesome sort of glossy sheen on it, but because it's like I haven't sort of uh, polished it or, or uh, sanded it with like really fine grit sandpaper. It's got almost like a textured finish underneath as well. It looks awesome. I love it. Um, so yeah, now it's all dried up. We can actually start removing the masking tape and everything and see how it's going to look on the actual tires. Still leaving a little bit of overspray from there. That's right, you can get a little bit of mineral terps on a rag or something like that and give that a rubber and then it'll come straight off. The benefit of having the rubber is the paint can't really stick to it. Um, so yeah, a little bit of terps and it'll come straight off. I'll show you what I mean. Just grab yourself some old undies. These were yesterday, so they're still nice and warm. And you'll notice as I'm scrubbing, it sort of takes that away. It's to soak for a second and then it just starts to rub it off. shows up on camera but you can see obviously there's where the masking tape was and then there's that little bit of overspray from that side it's not really something too concerning to do so essentially I'm going to mask it so that when I paint this inside area with black tape I'm not going to have any overspray going onto the gold part of the rim it's as easy as just putting a little bit of masking tape over the top there and then just going for it light coats of um, some black eventually uh... So, now all the hard work is done, uh, we can actually do some stuff that looks kind of cool. <laughs> Not that gold rooms don't look cool, but anyway, on these ones here, they've just got obviously Maxis written there. I'm just going to basically um, colour in the top section there. These paint, these pens do take a little bit to get used to because they've got a weird mechanism where obviously you shake them, but then you also have to kind of press down on them to get the paint to come through the felt. And then you have to kind of, I find it best to almost stroke the pen away from yourself, but you'll play with it and just sort of see what works. And it allows you to get a really nice, cl nice clean finish on the edge as well. What I do here is I basically go over and do a second coat, and that way you make sure you get a much more nice, even white surface. You're gonna get this regardless of what you paint over. I mean, you're gonna have a black background and painting over it with white, you're always gonna get a bit of see-through. So consecutive coats will always help to cover that. But overall, I think it makes the tire look wicked. What do you reckon?
just like that, we're at the end of another DIY video. Very happy with how these turned out. The gold paint, I think, really sets it off. You can see here, I mean, this is obviously not a how to paint your gold, your rims gold. It's just how to paint your rims. This process, you can pretty much follow, you can alter, you can do whatever you want with it. But this is a basic way to show how to paint your rims if you look for something a little bit different and to stand out from the crowd a little bit more like uh, you know all those big influencers try to do <laughs> um so yeah i'm really happy with that the center caps i think even that black bit just really helps to balance it otherwise i think if you just painted the whole thing gold it would probably look a little bit cheap but really really happy with how that's turned out and actually there's no real obvious looking spots there i mean where that big road gash was i mean the fact that i'm having to look for it now <laughs> is probably pretty indicative that i can't you can't really tell where it was before the little ones i got out it was, yeah, oh, there it is down here. I love it, <laughs> it looks awesome. So guys, thank you again so much for watching this video. Um, it really does um, mean a lot to know that you guys are out there watching and learning from these things as well. This isn't anything 200 specific, it's not even car specific to be honest, or four wheel drive specific. It is literally how to paint your rim. So if you wanna do that on whatever you like, go for it. Um, if you wanna support the channel even more, head over to Patreon. Uh, I've already got a bunch of really cool followers on there who are getting the inside scoop on what's happening with Off-Road Crusader. They also get the heartwarming feeling that they're helping out a first-time dad who has no idea what he's doing, and I really appreciate that. So thank you very much to all my Patreon supporters who are helping out there. I'm also on Instagram if you wanted to check that out. There's all links in the descriptions and things like that as well. So um, yeah, I'm going to go and fit these up to the car, and I think I'm going to go for a drive. So um, yeah, thanks guys. I'll catch you on the next episode. Have a good one. Cheers.